uh, the video about fiscal policy. This is a topic recap for the O level in IGCSC. Uh, it's a very simple uh, video, but I'm sure it's going to give you a lot of good content. So let's start uh, by first describing what fiscal policy is. So, well, fiscal policy is policies which are used by the government to manipulate or change aggregate demand to meet objectives, to meet its objectives by changing government spending and taxation and taxes. So basically, aggregate demand is the policy used by the government to influence, sorry, fiscal policy is the policy used by the government to uh, influence aggregate demand and the way it does it by um, changing the levels of government spending and by changing the levels of taxation in an economy. So yeah, this is what fiscal policy is. And uh, fiscal policy um, is basically a macroeconomic policy. It's a collection of tools. And uh, what can come under uh, fiscal policy so when it comes to government spending, government spending, G and taxation, which is D. So this is how the government um, use. So what can the government use uh, government spending for? So you, the government can use the government spending on like the welfare of its people, uh, on public goods, on uh, projects and infrastructure, on subsidies, so all of the government expenditure will create the demand or increase the demand for jobs or for raw materials and other things out of taxation is basically direct and indirect taxes. And primarily the government will use in direct, direct taxes in fiscal policy since they will directly affect the level of aggregate demand. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Let's move on to the types of policies. So if you talk about expansionary and fiscal policy, uh, expansionary and contractionary fiscal policy, there are two types of policies for fiscal expansion. Fiscal policy is a policy when, um, which increases aggregate demand. So in an expansionary fiscal policy, aggregate demand increases, the government is going to increase the level of government spending and reduce taxation, which is going to increase aggregate demand. Sorry about that. Still getting into grips. Yeah, so aggregate demand basically decreases from 80 naught to 81. Sorry, increases from 80 naught to 81. Why? Because if the government is increasing its spending, if the government is lowering its rate of taxation, so people will have more disposable income, firms will have more net profit, this, it is going to invest, I will increase, C will increase, so aggregate demand is going to increase. I think you can see the first effect of this is that the output is going to increase from Y0 to Y1. So the first positive consequence, let's talk about the positive consequences first. So what are the positives? Positives. What are the positive impact? Number one, there's going to be an increase in output. The GDP of the country is going to increase. 
increase in output, the GDP of the country is going to increase. This is a good thing, right? The, and what is going to happen because of this? So as you can see in the short term, the excess capacity with the um, firm which the country has, which is given by this blue um, horizontal line, this, this capacity is getting uh, utilized. So which means that unemployment falls, unemployment decreases, incomes of people will increase. When incomes increases, consumption is going to increase. Also, the living standards of people are going to increase because now they will have more money to spend. Living standards are going to increase, which means a country's human development index is going to increase. The way you're going to measure living, uh, living standard is through a um, metric known as HDI, Human Development Index. So if a country ki, uh, development of the living standard, barta hai to HDI bhi barta hai. The, what is the third uh, impact? The third impact, which is that if the country has a surplus, if the country is producing more, there may be a surplus, which means you can export. And if you're exporting, if exports are increasing, you're going to get more money. You'll get more dollar inflows, which means that the current account is going to increase. How cool is that? Right? And current account is a part of balance of payment, which looks at all the inflows or incomes and expenditures flowing into it, flowing in and out of the economy. Um, so yeah, um, these are the things. And of course, to meet the need and aggregate demand, there's going to firms be expand. Firms may grow, and there is going to be an increase in investment. So overall, uh, good things are going to happen in the economy. But at the same time, there are certain negatives. What are the negatives of such a policy? So if the government is trying to increase the aggregate demand through fiscal expansionary fiscal policy, the first negative is that in the long term, if the aggregate demand keeps on increasing, as can be seen from 81 to 82, what is going to happen is that not only the output is going to increase, which is a good thing again, but you can see that the price levels have also started to increase. Sorry about the wonky line but the price levels are increasing from P0 to P1, which shows that price levels will increase in the long run. Inflation, this is known as inflation. So inflation. Number two, and this is something which you need to understand that as um, you are going to expand more, it is going to put pressure on a country's resources and it may lead to depletion of resources. So it is going to affect the aggregate supply in the long run if you keep on consuming and you do not give enough time for uh, resources to grow back again, it is going to create problems for you. Um, number three is, uh, yeah, so so that is about it. This should work. Um, also, the other thing which could happen is that in the long term, since you're producing more, you may need to import raw materials. So what's going to happen is since you are growing very rapidly, you may need raw materials to grow and may, you may be importing them, which is going to maybe lead to a current account deficit in the long run, right? And this may be bad if it keeps on growing. So um, expansion fiscal policy, happens when aggregate demand increases, and this is due to 
an increase in government spending and a reduction in taxation. Uh, what are the positives? So I have covered this. What is the positive? The first positive is there is an increase in output. GDP increases, which means that the government has more money. Uh, it has uh, overall it is growing, so all the indicators may go towards positive. There's going to be decline in unemployment. Incomes will increase, which means consumption will increase. And of course, when incomes increases, uh, taxes for the government may also increase because now there'll be more people to give income tax. There may be a surplus in quantity which can be exported and foreign exchange could be earned. Firms may grow, which means there could be an investment in the economy. The negative is that the price levels may well increase. As you can see that the price will rise from P0 to P1 in the long run. Uh, there's going to be a pressure on a country's uh, resources, which may uh, lead to depletion and fall in a country's aggregate supply in the long run. May need to import raw material, which is going to increase the dependency on imports and may lead to an increase in current account deficit. So this is a very quick crash of expansionary fiscal policy. Now let's, so a, a government will use expansionary fiscal policy to achieve the economic, macroeconomic objective of increasing output and the macroeconomic policy of reducing um, the levels of unemployment. At the same time, the government can use, just let me share this. Yeah. So the government may also would want to reduce aggregate demand and it can do it it can do uh, it through contractionary fiscal policy as you can see that the aggregate demand is high and you are already consuming a lot of resources so the price levels are high at p not so the government may want, want to reduce the price levels and for that it may uh, you know introduce contractionary fiscal policy contractionary fiscal policy or policies when aggregate demand decreases for that the government may spend less or increase the level of taxation increased levels of taxation will reduce consumption and investment aggregate demand will increase decrease from ad not to ad1 there is going to be a backward shift and you can see that the level of output is falling from y not to y1 and at the same time you can see that the ad is ad1 is intersecting at AS at point E1. This is E0, which means that the price levels are decreasing. So what are the positives? The first positive, number one, inflation may decline, which is a good thing. Uh, secondly, what you can see is that less burden on a country's resource. Right? And you can see the less burden on the country's resource, which is a good thing. So aggregate demand is decreasing from 80 naught to 81. And um, yeah, so interest rates may rise because of the contract, but that is contractionary monetary policy. Other things could be that, um, so the negatives are very, very, very visible. You can see, and if you memorize the diagram, you can, you know, make sense of a lot of things. You can see that the real GDP is decreasing from Y0 to Y1, which means that real GDP or the output is falling, which is going to lead to, Unemployment. Unemployment is going to rise. And when unemployment is going to rise, what's going to happen? It will put government's burden will increase because now the government will have to support these people in the form of welfare benefits. The government will have to pay all of these people who are unemployed a certain amount of money, you know, to keep them uh, afloat. Um, the other point related to this is there could be a fall in income taxes since most of the people are getting unemployed. Fall in income taxes. Um, 
And you know, uh, when aggregate demand falls, and if there's unemployment, this is known as what kind of unemployment? Cyclical unemployment, right? Um, firms may shut down. and exit, which means in the long term aggregate supply may decrease. So these are the, some of the very, very big negatives. And, you know, as the government's taxes, foreign income tax decreases, government may still have, uh, government may not have enough budget in the future to increase its spending. So government spending may also decrease in the future, which is problematic because the government may not have enough resources. So this is a very quick crash. Um, of contractual fiscal policy, policies which reduce the aggregate demand by decreasing government spending and increasing taxation. Positives, it may reduce inflation and it may put less burden on a country's resources. Uh, the real GDP will fall, which means there could be an increase in cyclical unemployment. The government's burden would increase since now the government would have to pay a higher level of welfare benefits. There could be a fall in taxes, which means that the government may not have enough uh, resources in the future and firms may shut down or exit the economy. So this is a very quick uh, recap of the topic. I hope that it was helpful. And if it is, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you, hope this helps.